Lebanon, I think, is composed of three major minorities. Lebanon has no majority in terms of sects. Approximately 30% of the Lebanese are Shiites, 30% are Sunnis. These are approximate figures. And another 30% uh, are between uh, Maronites and Greek Orthodox. Now the rest are Druze and Catholics and so on, you know, but uh, these are the major sects. This split in religious affiliation is also reflected in the political system, whereby the president has to be a Maronite Christian. The prime minister, a Sunni Muslim and Speaker of the Parliament, a Shia Muslim. Top public appointments also adhere to a similar logic. This sectarian division that has for decades characterized Lebanon, some would say plagued, has produced another national phenomenon, hereditary politics. The first loyalty is to the sect, and the sect draws you to the family, not to the nation. Which means that the sect always draws you to what is smaller, not what is larger. The nation is larger than the sect, the family is smaller. And this means that the loyalty of those who are sectarian is always to a family of that sect. And supporters of this family loyalty find other justifications. There is a certain magic and a certain legacy. What is important about the Jumayil family is that we started out serving the public before we entered politics. And there's a difference between the two. Serving the public means the social and human aspect of helping people. Amin Jamael freely admits that the family name was his ticket into politics. What moved me in 1970 to enter the political arena was the electoral situation in my area. We were in a difficult situation, and our members in the area thought that the election battle is easier to win with a member of the Jumayil family rather than any other phalangist candidate. Despite being widely recognized as the most democratic state in the region, such hereditary privileges lead some to question the peculiar nature of its democracy. Legally, we are a state and we have a long history in this region. But sociologically and politically, we are a tribe or a group of tribes. As you know, a sheikh usually rules the tribe, and conflict takes place between one sheikh and another, and the tribal tradition of rule is hereditary. Therefore, we'll be lost if we try to understand Lebanon as a state. But if we view Lebanon as a tribe, everything will make sense to us. And if you're not a member of one of the nation's traditional political tribes, a long career in Parliament may prove elusive. My problem is that I am not a Jumail. This is a big problem. For example, I had many friends from among the clergy, and many were at odds with Amin Jumail, even with his father Pierre. I used to go to see and meet them. They would tell me that we agree with you and we are against the household of Jumail but we can't conceive of the Falange party without the Jumails. This shows the depth of belief in hereditary rule among Maronites. The civil war exposed and exacerbated the sectarian nature of Lebanese society, while further strengthening the grip of the ruling families. Even someone coming from the opposite end of the political spectrum to the Falangists feared the obliteration of his people. 
The civil war came and the role played by the Socialist Progressive Party was reduced. Its role was to break through all sectarian lines, but the party became just a Druze party. My concern was to safeguard the Druze when the right-wing Lebanese parties conspired with the Israelis and threatened our existence. Here again, the imperative was to find a son, an inheritor for a number of reasons. One of them has to safeguard the legacy. Don't forget that we're a small clan in this Arab world. One must inherit it and safeguard the interests of what's left of Lebanon's Druze community. But it was the Falange party representing Maronite Christians with the Jemael family at its center that produced Lebanon's best-known dynasty. Pierre the father saw Bashir become president only to be killed within three weeks. He had paid the ultimate price for defending his tribe. It's our job, it's our task. Either we can defend our country and at this time, fine, we deserve this country or we cannot defend it Maybe we should look for green cards in the U.S. and leave. The Falange carried on fighting and carried on inheriting leadership and power. It is little wonder that the Falange party is the only political group in the Middle East that has the word family in its slogan and family comes before country. It's a mission that not many people understand it. However, it means a lot to us. When the slogan was first coined by the party, God, family, country, we knew what that meant to us. God, without him, everything would be non-existent. The family, it is the central cell that according to its well-being, the country will be better. And the country is what, at the end, unites us all together. These are human and spiritual principles. It is a belief that we have dedicated ourselves to defend. <laughs> 